On this show, will the M2 series be all chiplet based? Also, Mac Mini chips, 120Hz external displays, making the iPad Pro again, and what's all this extra power for? What MacBook to buy, and even bigger iPad Pros? Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. So let's get into your iCave answers from this show. The first one comes from John Malkin asking, iCave answers, do you think that all the new M2 chips under the consumer version will be cut from the same die m1 seems like an outlier now and this is a really good point because it does look like the m1 ultra is the two chips uh, from m1 max that are fused together and i think they're fused together right from when they're made on the dies uh, i think they do have the option to take them off and refuse them together but i do think that that's kind of how they're all grown so you kind of etch in all of these ultras and then where you've got issues on the chips you cut those parts away and they become m1 maxes or m1 pros or maybe even m1s uh, or you know going to an m1 or an m2 in future maybe this is how it's going to work and i do think apple's been quite clever with this and the way that these things have been done it could even be that that's part of the reason that m uh, m1 pro and m1 max took so long took a full year to come because maybe apple were kind of reworking the way that the dies were going to be laid out so that they could have these kind of larger chip groups and then cut away the parts that they uh, had issues with going forward so that could well be part of the reason that these have taken so long to come out and the reason that we've kind of got behind on what I thought was going to be an annual update cycle for everything. I still think that's what Apple is intending in the end. However, they have got a little bit behind right now. Yes, I think this is a really practical thing. And I think it is quite possibly what they're going to do going forward. Next up, Eugene King asks, IK Vance's... I have two questions. Number one, do you think the Mac Mini that John Prosser leaked could be released with the M2 chip and the M1 Pro chip as an upgrade? And two, will Apple ever release a computer which outputs 120 hertz to an external display? Thanks very much. And yes, let's get to the first part first. So uh, in terms of the chips going into the Mac Minis, uh, there's mixed reports now from Guoming Chi that actually Apple might stick with the current design for the body shell for the uh, Mac Minis. Maybe there's been some manufacturing issues with what they were hoping to do. Maybe uh, it's something else entirely. Maybe it's just not ready. But it does look like Apple is going to stick potentially with the current design. Now, I was very excited about John Prosser's version. I think it looks awesome. And I'm a Mac Mini fan. That's exactly what we're using to run this whole channel. But I do think that M2 and M1 Pro or M1 Max, uh, probably just M1 Pro, are likely to come to the Mac Minis but that remains to be seen. In terms of the second part of the question, 120 hertz external displays, yes, I think it's coming. I think there will be a pro display that comes next, uh, which might just be 5K. Maybe they drop back down from 6K to 5K, but they add the higher refresh rates, giving it 120 hertz. Now, there is a potential for this as well, that instead of actually sending 120 hertz to the display, which means a huge amount of... Um, data going across those cables could it be that the a13 chip inside has uh some sort of in betweening like an interpolation where it basically estimates the frames in between the 60 hertz frames that are being sent by the computer and puts those into the slots kind of like an in-betweener artist in animation you get the animators that do the key frames uh, and then the in-between artists come in and fill in the gaps could Apple be using an A13 to do that inside a display? Possibly. We'll see what happens in future. But yes, uh, HDMI 2.1 is capable of 120 hertz for 4K at least, so that's not far away. John Malkin asks, IK answers, what chip would go inside the iPad Pro? Seems the iPad Pro will be limited compared to the MacBook due to the thermal envelope. No fan maybe solid state cooling now interesting question there's a good chance that from m3 at least onwards though that apple will be dropping down another um another size node in terms of the actual production which will increase efficiency that being said i think that the ipad pros are probably going to get m2 chips but possibly binned m2 chips with uh, one less graphics core 
or two less graphics cores enabled. That would make the most sense to me in terms of getting the most yield out of the chips. The M1 uh, iPad Pro has been kind of overpowered. There's a lot of people that said there's no actual use case for the amount of power that they've got in this iPad because you can only use one display really to any real extent. Yeah, so I think M2, it, we doesn't actually need M2 to go in anytime soon, but it would also be great to kind of freshen it up every year and keep up with the Mac chips too. Evan Rogers, IK answers, how do you anticipate Apple and other software companies across all OSs taking advantage of the exponential performance growth we are beginning to see in computer hardware, not just from Apple? Is it all about VR? Will gaming worlds reach and surmount the uncanny valley? Now this is a really interesting question. If, uh, if you don't know what the uncanny valley is, it's basically as you create something, if you think of uh, Pixar or companies like that that make kind of cartoonish computer graphics, uh, we kind of associate them as being kind of real. Um, but because your brain isn't trying to process them as an actual human, uh, it doesn't look so closely. The uncanny valley is basically you get uh, a level of this looks great, this looks great, this looks great, this looks great. And then you get to uncanny valley, which is basically where it looks so close to human that all you can feel is that this isn't quite right. And you get into the valley and then it comes back out the other side. And we're in uncanny valley right now with some of the stuff like Luke Skywalker being generated for some of the uh, Star Wars series and things like that. But the more uh, horsepower you've got, the better you can train AIs, especially with the um, neural engines that Apple has. It could be that this is the sort of stuff that will bring us a little bit closer to getting that realism that tricks humans. Um, however, I think that the extra power is really preparing for what comes next software-wise. Uh, there is an element of AR and VR, but I don't think a huge amount of that is going to be Mac-powered. I think that's going to be its own kind of standalone thing. I'm not 100% sure, but... Uh, one thing we can always know is that software will tend to fill the void of what can the power do. Yeah, the original games that were text adventures was because that was all you could do with it. I don't think the Oregon Trail was ever sort of envisioned as this fabulous choose your own adventure book. But, is, but as that is what the technology could support at the time, that's what we got. As the technology gets better, basically the stuff that we can do on it will automatically kind of get better not automatically, but the developers will take advantage of the stuff that they can do with it. So in answer to your question, could be anything. Basically, whatever developers decide to do with it. Randomness R asks, IK answers, I'm still praying for a 16-inch MacBook M2 Air, and if it doesn't happen, I'll have to settle for the Pro. Which chip would you recommend, the M1 Pro or M1 Max? I'm so tempted to buy the M1 Max with 64 gigs and a 2 to 4 terabyte storage option to future-proof it, but now that we're six months into Apple's releases, if Apple releases the M2 Max with Face ID, then I'll be mad. Currently have a fully functional 2018 16-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. Please help me decide. Thank you. So as much as I would love Apple to be bringing out the new 16-inch M2 Pro and M2 Max in sort of September, October time, I don't think they will. I think that we are going to see M2 then, and maybe a year from now we might see the next M1, uh, the next M2 Pro and Max chips coming. But Again, this remains to be seen. Everything's a little bit up in the air. There's even more delays in China right now because certain areas have been locked down because of more coronavirus outbreaks. Nothing's getting back to normal right now. So there are likely to be more delays. I would pick up whatever you want to use right now. If you want to go for an M M1 Pro or an M1 Max, I would say get the base spec of whichever of those chips that you want to go for purely because they will resell better you will lose less value on those than you would lose if you kind of spec out the hard drives and things like that if you can work with some external hard drive space that would be a really good way to do it uh, that will keep your resale high on the device for what you have and again from randomness r ik answers now the ipad air has got m1 is it possible for apple to differentiate the pro line by releasing a 15 to 16 inch ipad pro with m2 since the new Samsung tablet got larger, almost 15 inch screen now. I don't think Apple wants to compete in that way. I don't think they want to compete on who can do the largest tablet, who can do the largest thing. And I don't think they really care what Samsung's doing because otherwise they would have been copying the folding phones by now because 
Apparently some people like that. So no, I don't think that Apple is going to go above 12.9 inches, not substantially, at least in the near future. Maybe one day, never say never, we might get iPads the size of iMacs soon, but I don't see it coming in the near future. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you've got a question for a future show, hashtag iCaveAnswers down in the comments section. We're catching up through all the stuff that's been going for the last week while I've been super busy. Uh, thank you so much to the Patreons over here. If you want to join them, iCaveDave.com forward slash Patreon. And if you want a cool t-shirt with my stuff on it, iCaveDave.com forward slash merch.